Hey, what's up everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to the conversation. So today I got a pretty interesting topic that I want to get into. And the question is, can Paul George be the Scottie Pippen to Kawhi Leonard? That's what I want to get into this video today. Now, some of you guys here in this topic may think, okay, wait a minute, this is a little bit off. It's coming from a little bit different of an angle, but I'm sure, I'm sure a good amount of you out there thought about it when the Clippers were able to acquire Kawhi Leonard, and then they went out and got Paul George. Immediately, what jumped to my mind and some and other people, for example, like Max Kellerman, I immediately thought about the Jordan and Scottie Pippen Bulls. Why did I think about this team? Number one, this team was, a, of course, a dynamic duo, which is pretty much similar to that of you know Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. That's number one. Number two, they're two big wing players. Michael Jordan was about 6'6", 230 or 25 pounds or so. Scottie Pippen was about 6'8", 240 or, or 35, I'm not sure. But he was a bigger wing and he played the small forward while Michael Jordan played the shooting guard position, the two position. And the two of them were just like attack dogs on defense and two-way players. Scottie Pippen could, you know, could average about, I think for his career average around 17 points or so. But one season, the season when Michael Jordan actually left on his sabbatical, he averaged above 20 points that season. So Scottie Pippen was a really, really good running mate. When the Bulls went up against the Los Angeles Lakers in the finals for the first time when Michael Jordan went against my, uh, Magic Johnson and the Lakers, after I think game one, Phil Jackson actually switched Scottie Pippen on to Magic Johnson to play him full court to put pressure on their ball handling, which would be able to take them out of their sets a little bit more. And you know, Scottie Pippen was picking up Magic Johnson full court. So Scottie Pippen was an amazing tandem mate or Robin, so to speak, to Michael Jordan's Batman to the tune of six NBA finals, I mean, to, to, to six NBA championships. Now, granted, Michael Jordan pretty, pretty much got all the credit in the finals because he won six MVPs, but we all know that there's no way in hell Michael Jordan would have been able to get six uh, you know, championships had he not been playing with Scottie Pippen, who was an amazing, amazing running mate. And the two players went off to have tr a tremendous amount of success in their careers, and they're in the top 50 greatest basketball players of all time, and Michael Jordan went on to do amazing things with his career, now being worth $1.9 billion as a majority owner of the Charlotte Hornets. Now, but they had this synergistic sort of chemistry together, and they were able to work really well together, which made me think, <clears throat> excuse me, of Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. Now, in many people's eyes, Kawhi Leonard is regarded as the best player in the world. Many people's eyes, not everyone. There are a group of people out there that think it's LeBron. There are a group of people that may think it's Giannis Antetokounmpo or whomever, even James Harden, wh whoever it is. But there's a good amount of people out there that believe that Kawhi Leonard is the best player in the world. And when Michael Jordan was playing, he was considered the best player ever. And the thing is, after the off-season movements that happened with Anthony Davis going to the Lakers, Kevin Durant and Ky Kyrie Irving going to play with the with the uh, with the Brooklyn Nets, you know, and Kawhi ultimately going to play with the Clippers and then bringing up Paul, bringing along Paul George, a lot of questions were sort of asked: Will Paul George be able to live up to the hype? Well, to this point in his career, Paul George, you know, he actually was drafted um, in the NBA in 2010 as the 10th overall pick by the Indiana pa Indiana Pacers. Since then, he's been he's gone on to become a six-time NBA All-Star. He's been on one All-NBA first team, been on four All-Third teams, been on two All-First defensive teams, and two All-Second defensive teams. And he actually led the league in steals in 2019. And he was won the, the award for in 2013 for the Most Improved Player of the Year award, which is really important. And I'll, and I'll get back to that a little bit later in my argument. Now, just go, going back a few seasons, we all know that he played with the Indiana Pacers and he ultimately went to go play with the Oklahoma City Thunder. And although they didn't have a lot of playoff success, talking about the Oklahoma City Thunder with him being paired with Russell Westbrook, you know, to fill the void of Kevin Durant leaving that team, his last season in Oklahoma, he did pretty well. Now, he played about 37 minutes a game. He pretty much scored about 28 points a game that season. He shot 43.8% from the floor. He shot 38.6% from the three-point line, he got you, he shot about 84% from the free throw line. He averaged about 8.2 rebounds, 4.1 assists, and he averaged 2.2 steals. And in many people's eyes, Paul George is widely regarded as one of the best two-way players in, bas in all of basketball. Not just because of, you know, his scoring, but on the defensive end for his length, his quickness, how fast he is, his athleticism, all of these things 
make him a really good defensive player. And then on the other hand, he can still put up buckets and average above 25 points a game if given the opportunity to do so. Now, this current season, he's actually playing seven minutes less per game. He's averaging 30 minutes a game. He's averaging 23.5 points a game, getting you six rebounds and 3.7 assists. Now, his free throw shooting is at 90%, which is amazing. He's shooting 7% better than the last season, which is pretty good because in tight situations, you need someone that can go up, you know, get fouled, go to the free throw line and hit free throws. And Paul George has shown that he has the ability to do so. He's shooting 39.5% from the three-point line, which is in, which is astonishing. He's almost shooting 40% from the from the three uh, from the three-point line, and he's getting you 1.1 steals a game. So he has a complete all-around package to his game. But the question now becomes: Will he mesh well with Kawhi Leonard to the tune of championships? Well. To put things in perspective, of all of the games that Kawhi Leonard and Paul George have played together, they've only lost three times. Of all the games, I think they played a total of maybe 10, 13 games, excuse me, or uh, 10, I'm, I'm, excuse me, the numbers are important, but they've lost only three times. Now, granted, Kawhi Leonard has been nursing a lingering injury, and Paul George is currently not playing due to a hamstring pull that he actually has. So. That's the reason why the, the two of them are not playing together, and we haven't seen them play much together. Granted, they also didn't have a training camp together because Paul George was coming off of a shoulder surgery, so that's the reason why they couldn't train him, you know, um, you know, have a training camp together where they would have been able to build a lot of chemistry. So, unfortunately, those things didn't come into play. But needless to say, he's doing pretty well, in, you know, in the, in, the, in the season thus far, and, in the, and, it's, and it's his ninth season in the NBA. And as I said before, they've only lost three times when the both of them are playing at the same time. Now, as I'm doing this video, the Clippers are currently the number two seed in the in the Western Conference with a 33 and 14 record. Now, I know a lot of people in the comment sections have been getting at me, man, your, your facts are off and all of this stuff. Let me just quickly say that when we make these videos, I don't we don't make a video that day, edit a video that day and put it up. We prepare a video. So sometimes when I make a video, when we release a video, time has gone on. So that's the reason for that to answer that question. So you don't leave comments saying I don't know my facts or anything like that. So that's the current record of the Clippers. Now, overall, as a team, the Clippers are currently the number two team in all of the NBA in rebounding, which is pretty good. You know, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a really good sign in their number four in scoring so they're able to really you know a defense a good defensive team can actually get rebounds and the number one team in the nba and rebounding leading the league in rebounding of 51.6 rebounds a game are the milwaukee bucks who are known to be a really really good defensive team now can paul george live up to the hype because the knock on him has been he's never been that dude you know he's been in situations in indiana in the playoffs going up against LeBron where he just kind of crumbled and LeBron always got the best of him and he's never been able to live up to his talent let's say he's an amazing player he's a great player two seasons ago he was in the top three for voting for for, for regular season MVP and I think he almost led the league in steals he was right there with Russell, with Russell Westbrook but the thing is he hasn't been able to get over the top now if we're going to compare him to someone like Scottie Pippen, can he be the Scottie Pippen to Michael Jordan? Scottie Pippen is a six-time champion. He's a seven-time All-Star. He's been an All-Star game MVP. He's been on three All-First NBA teams, eight All-First all defensive teams, and he's actually led the league in steals in 1995. And you can go on with his accomplishments, but Scottie Pippen is, you know, widely, widely regarded as one of the greatest players, Average 16 points a game. Got you 6.4 6 rebounds a game, but obviously his scoring would be up if Michael if he did not play alongside Michael Jordan. Now, in my opinion, in my honest assessment, what I think is going to happen is this. I think that the championship pedigree and habits and mentality and approach that Kawhi Leonard has acquired throughout his career, being a two-time finals MVP, you know, with his stint, you know, in, uh, in with the San Antonio Spurs in his one year off that he had with the Toronto Raptors, being close to people like Kobe Bryant, who was he was really close to, who gave him a lot of guidance, who he looks up to, who has a very, very strong will to win. I've seen that in Kawhi. Kawhi has that same kind of will to win game, and I saw it all throughout the playoffs. Last season, 
when the Milwaukee Bucks went up on them two games to nothing, people were calling the series over. I remember so many people saying that it was a wrap, the series was over, but he was able to come back and really pull that series out, which was absolutely incredible. And I think he's gonna have that same effect on Paul George. I think if they're able to get a ring, if they're able to win this chip, and Kawhi Leonard, ha I mean, and Paul George gets a taste of it, and he watches Kawhi Leonard sort of lead that team to prominence, I think that they have a really good chance to win at least three NBA titles together if they're healthy. I think he can be the Scottie Pippen to Kawhi Leonard, uh, you know, to, to Kawhi Leonard, you know, what Scottie Pippen was to Michael Jordan. So that's my opinion and that's what I believe. But what I want to know from you guys is, do you think that Paul George can actually be the Scottie Pippen to Kawhi Leonard? you know, given that Kawhi Leonard is the better player? Or do you think that he's not that dude, he doesn't really have it in him, you haven't seen it in him, and they need to go out and make another trade and get someone else? Whatever you think about it, please let me know your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. I really want to know what you guys think about uh, about this particular topic because it's going to be something that's going to be trending for the next few months and even years if they continue to play together. Um, once again, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to be notified when all of our newest and hottest hottest content comes out. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day. Peace.